friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. Today we are back in the kitchen and we are gonna be dehydrating potatoes. I just harvested these two days ago and my absolute favorite way to preserve potatoes is via dehydrating. We also we dehydrate in shreds, slices, and like a dices or chunks. And I just te checked my pantry and I am almost out of shreds. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. But you can do this, this process that I'm gonna be showing you today or work with any kind of cut that you want to make. Before we get started, there are two things that I wanted to discuss. If you are harvesting your own potatoes, you don't want to wash them until right before you are going to be processing them. Same thing with from the store. Potatoes are just very susceptible to mold and mildew and getting slimy and all that. And you don't want to, when you pull them out of the ground, they're going to be dirty, obviously, and you're going to be tempted to spray them off with a water hose, but don't do that. Keep them good and dry until you're ready to process. And this morning I washed these off. I let them soak in a solution of hydrogen peroxide and water, um, approximately a, or a, a sink full of water and about half a cup of peroxide. And I let those soak. And then I washed, I don't, peel my potatoes when I'm dehydrating them. I do for canning, but not for dehydrating. And because of that, I like to use a rough scrubby and I scrub each potato clean really, really well before um, I start shredding. The next thing I wanna note is if you, whether you're harvesting or whether you're purchasing from the store or farmer's market or whatever, uh, you do not want to use any green potatoes. It's kinda hard to see on the camera. Well, it's like you see this yellow right here and you can see how it turns green. This happens when the potato comes into contact with the sun and it has a chemical reaction within the potato that makes it toxic. So we're not gonna eat the or process the green potatoes. I'm gonna set that aside. So my setup here, I have my rotary shredder. That's what I'm gonna be using. And we have a pot of water here that we're going to be using for blanching. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on low and when I get about halfway through this pile of potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and turn that all the way high because eventually we need boiling water. Uh, we don't, we want our potatoes to go into the blanching water all at the same time. So I don't want to shred and then put them in here, shred and then put them in here. So I just have an extra pot back here and as this fills up, I'll dump it into here so that we can all go into the blanching water at the same time. Okay, let's get shredding. I am still shredding, but my blanching pot has come to a boil and I'm gonna have to do this in multiple batches. So now that the water is boiling, I'm going to slowly add in this pot down back here. And just to avoid splashback, I'm just gonna drop it in gently. And when you're blanching, you don't start the time until the water comes back to a rolling boil. So once you add this food, it's gonna not be boiling anymore. So we're not gonna start our time until it starts boiling again. When it comes to dehydrating, a lot of food, I venture to say most food is optional for blanching. You don't have to blanch. It helps retain some nutrients, it helps retain color, and it helps food rehydrate quicker. But it's still optional. But with potatoes, it's not. You absolutely have to blanch or else they will turn black and nobody wants to eat them. <laughs> Ask my family. <laughs> I didn't know that when I first started dehydrating and uh, the first batch of potatoes I ever did turned out completely black and they were just comp totally unappetizing. Um, so blanching is a must with potatoes. Okay, that's about all I'm going to fit in there. So we're gonna wait for that to come to, back to a boil before we start our timer. Now, while that's happening, we are going to, let me swap this out. Let me pour this in here real quick. Okay, while it's boiling, we're gonna go ahead and prep the next step, which is an ice water bath. So potatoes, once you cut them into smaller pieces, whether it's shreds or slices or dices, uh, they cook really fast and we don't want to fully cook them at this stage and they can actually 
cook in the residual heat left over from blanching even after you take them out of the blanching pot. So we're going to fill this up with cold water, not all the way. We need, we need room for all those potatoes to go, so probably about halfway with cold water. And then I'm going to add an entire tray of ice cubes to that. So I'm going to get that prepped right now. So the water has come to a boil. In fact, it just boiled over just a little bit. So I'm going to set my timer for three minutes. Three to four. I'm going to do four minutes. This is a really, really large pot. So four minutes. And we're going to want to take them out immediately. So right here, I have my ice water bath going. I've got cold water in it. And now I'm just going to crack open an ice cube tray. And wait for the timer to go off and we'll just start scooping from here into our ice bath. Okay, our timer just went off so I'm just going to start scooping from this pot and putting it straight into our ice bath. If you notice there is a ton of foam at the top and that is all that starch coming out of those potatoes. So once we get done loading up our ice bath we're going to let it sit there for just one minute and then we're going to drain out all that water and then rinse the potatoes. Get all the rest of that starch off of the potatoes. Okay, I'm going to pop these in the dehydrator at 125 degrees just until it's done. I fully expect it to take at least 12 hours and we'll bring you back when it's done.